So I am in the garage playing with the truck. Um, I've been getting that noise again that I had when I took my first big adventure with it to the UP where it sounded like something in the front end was kind of grinding. Um, and sure enough, the passenger side front wheel bearing was a little, little loose, little play in it. And it's been grinding it. It ate the whole seal out of the back of the, the unit there. And, uh, yeah, killed it. Full of mud. Everything's gross. It needs some maintenance, and apparently I've been lazy on the maintenance part. However, um, when I bought the axles, because the gentleman was going to put them in a JK, um, he had all of the uh, stuff for converting the tone rings, the ABS in here. Um so I guess that's really important with the JK, so they'll shift right and stuff. Well, I wasn't worried about ABS. I deleted all that stuff anyway. Um, but I kept this tool uh, that you use to take the unit bearing apart. Um, the unit bearing spins nice and smooth. It's just a little loose. So um, for now, I'm going to see if I can tighten this thing up. All right, so Chris is over, and he brought with him this little Harbor Freight Pittsburgh hot glue gun dent repair puller kit. And uh, we'll just give you a little how-to on how it works. So what we're trying to do is pull the dents out of the cab here from the flop. And he actually did one pull already, um, which is kind of hard to see, but right here, he did one pull already um, and was able to really get a you know massive amount of that popped out of, the, out of there. So um, and again, dents are really hard to video, but there's a dent here now, um, which is a part of that that needs to come out. And then the biggest part of it is this up here, which is dented in really big, but we're just going to play with this stuff a little bit and, uh, see what we can get, see what we can get done here. I was pretty surprised by the amount he was able to pull that first section and, uh, can't imagine we're going to do anything to make it worse than it is already. So what the heck? All right. So the premise of this is basically hot glue gunning this little pulling adapter tool to the side of the truck. So he's got the hot glue gun all heated up. He's gonna put it on the dent that we're trying to pull the area. And you let it sit in one spot until it's cooled down. And then, uh, yeah, Two then you hook minutes. it to this thing and it supposedly pulls it out, which obviously works. So we're uh, let that sit and cool for three minutes and then we'll uh, bolt it down and show you the pull. All right, so now you thread on this, uh, thread on the little puller tool here. Try and get a bridge. Obviously the more angle the center bar is at, the more it's likely to pull it off, but obviously you're dealt with what you're dealt with. Yeah, you only get, you only have so many options, right? Yeah, it kind of is what it is. So, this may work, may not. Yeah, it's lifting it. So the thing is, you just gotta, it's hard to see because yeah. the puller, like, it's, it's kind of pushing in right here. Yeah, so let's back that off before we lose it. I'll spread that out further. I think it's a little more structural there, doesn't it? Yeah. Bring off the back of the cab on this one, so we'll see what it does. And I can obviously help hold it too. It's pretty wild though. So it's hard. We just got to make the call and stop pulling on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So, obviously we can let down to see how much it release. Yep. So that's pressure off. Yeah. It's hard to tell if we still have a dent or not, but... Ah, oh, man. <laughs> if there is, it isn't much of one. Alright, so if we can call that good, we'll take it off. We can put it back on. So, so once yeah. you get this out of the way, we'll get the release agent. It was how hard we pulled on it. Then the agent, it's hilarious. It comes right off. It's pretty wild. So you un unthread your bridge tool 
pull that off and Good then uh, and just put it around the top edge we got a lot of glue that time that's insane <laughs> The release agent just pops the glue loose, yeah. clean that off, do it again, re-glue it to the next spot. Let's keep going. I'm gonna try my first attempt at it. So I put the bigger one on there while Chris was cleaning the small pulling tool. So this pulling tool is like, I don't know, inch and a quarter circle. And uh, I'm just gonna try my hand at it because I haven't tried it yet. I was just watching him. But it's amazing. Like I can, I'm literally watching it pull the metal as I twist this knob. It's insane. Oh, oh, we lost it. But it pulled it. I mean, it definitely pulled a good portion of it out. Not not to the point that I wanted it to pull it out, but it pulled a good portion of it out. So, so we're going to try it again with this uh, bigger pad after it pulled out on me there. I will say, don't get the hot glue on your fingers. Doesn't feel great. All right. So we'll let that cool off for three minutes. We'll try again. Shocking. How, how good it actually does work. Like, not expecting to be able to do that as easy as it did. Seems to. Okay. So second attempt on this spot with the large pad. And uh, yeah. let's see what we can do, I guess. That's wild. It's probably really hard to capture on camera, but I'm literally just watching this dent just slowly come out as I turn the dial. You can kind of pause too when it's got some tension to it and let it sit for a minute and then pull more. I was kind of finding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's it's doing it. It's crazy that. That dent has so much pressure holding it as a dent. Oh, currently. yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's wild. Too funny. Well, I guess we just keep doing it. All right, so this thing is still bouncing all over the highway in the front. The front end's just really, really soft. These uh, Gladiator Rubicon shocks I've been using just aren't cutting it. So, um, yeah, obviously because they're probably not set up for what I'm doing, the kind of dampening I need, blah, blah, blah. However, brand new, like, I checked into some, like, aftermarket off-road shocks with you know companies that do custom tuning and stuff and it's big money and to be honest with you i got other issues i need to re rectify right now and so i'm trying to kind of keep it going on a budget but also tighten up the handling make it a little more fun to drive so i went to the parts store and i just picked up some like monroe magnum gas shocks looking at lengths these are for like a second generation Ram. So like a 94 to 01, three quarter ton, single rear wheel, four by four truck. Um, yeah, so the dampening, these feel much, much firmer than those. And I'm guessing that's gonna make this thing handle a whole lot better. They're kind of not pretty. I guess I could throw some paint at them, but most importantly, I just wanna bolt them on and go for a ride and see what this thing feels like, so. I'm gonna do that, and uh, yeah. Also found, um, after my little road trip with Chris, we were kind of messing around with that universal joint uh, and rear drive shaft, thinking we had a vibration or something. I figured out the 
universal joint has movement like side to side, uh, not necessarily in the needle bearings like rocking it, but like um, the shaft at the transfer case end can slide side to side. So uh, I did pick up a universal joint for that as well. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna try and tighten up a couple of things and keep it moving. So I also played with that hub. Um, again, just kind of testing things. Uh, unfortunately, now my inner axle seal is leaking. I got gear lube leaking out of this end of the axle housing, which that's a real bummer. That kind of is frustrating, but I guess more fun is what it is. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, for now, we're going to keep the front diff topped off. We're going to see if we can get the handling sorted. And then at some point, I'm gonna have to tear that whole differential apart. We gotta pull the axle shafts, gotta pull um, you know, the, the bearings, the axle shafts, and then we gotta pull the uh, cover, we gotta pull the carrier out, which means we gotta disconnect the airlines to the air locker and all that jazz just to replace those shaft seals in there. So that's a real bummer, but it is what it is, I guess. It's all part of the fun of four wheeling. For now, let's bolt on some shocks, do a U-joint, see if we can take her for a ride. So the Bilstein 4600 series is yellow, so maybe I could have Bilstein's front and back again. Don't tell anybody. Anyway, we'll move on. We'll see if we can get that universal joint replaced. We'll take it for a rip. All right, so this is the drive shaft, and you can kind of see that. But So the yoke here is moving side to side, and you'll notice... Snap ring, snap ring, part of a snap ring. And it doesn't look like it's lodged into that groove like it's supposed to be. So we are going to take this apart and uh, see if we can get it put together with a new U-joint with snap rings in the groove. And hopefully that will take care of our vibration that we're getting out of the... Uh, from underneath the truck, it feels like it's kind of right in the seat of your pants. This is the front universal joint on the rear drive shaft, right at the back of the transfer case, which is kind of right under your rear end. So hopefully this will do it. All right, so just as I was uh, bolting the drive shaft back in, Chris texted me and he needs a hand on loading a table saw. So we're gonna take our first drive and see how it feels. First, we got to turn on my driveway, which can prove to be interesting. <laughs> Already in between shifts, even it doesn't feel so floaty in the front end. Before, even between shifts, it felt like the front end was lifting and doing weird stuff and uh that's pretty amazing actually straight 
road driving it. That might have been the ticket we were looking for. It just feels like a normal truck. The front end doesn't feel like it's floating all over the place like it did. Just from a shock change. Chris has the hood open on the Jeep. What you doing over here? No, Jeep things. Jeep things? Warm car weather. Oh. Cold car weather. Yeah, got to get it ready for the summertime. All right, so I grabbed Chris and we're going to get his reaction because he's ridden in it and driven it quite a bit as well. So. Already feels better out of the driveway. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Yeah. Like it just doesn't feel so floaty in the front. Totally different truck. That's crazy. Right? Yeah. There's a, I mean, I'm it's like got a little bit of side to side, but nothing like a head. No. See, the worst is driving to work going across Potter, so. Yeah, between there and Garfield. Yeah. Between Three Mile and Garfield, Potter is just horrible. So I'm curious to hit that section. Also curious about the universal joint thing. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, some of that noise we had was over 80. We're not doing that around all. No. There's nowhere long enough and straight enough to get her up to 80. <laughs> Such a topper today in the wind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That already feels better. Isn't that wild? Way more stable. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's pitching you around or floating. like you're saying, makes you wonder if it's so much the uh, rebound. Yes. So yeah, the shocks that I took off, um, like when you unbolt them, those things are like, they just like instantly. It's like there was like, you know, no rebound whatsoever. No rebound valving, you know, nothing to slow it down. Just a lot of pressure for compression. Yeah. Where these were like, you know, fairly slow to open up. Yeah. Even just when you're lifting the shift, it doesn't do the whole weight transfers. Yeah. 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 performance version of the shock you'd be even further ahead probably right but you might as well run these until yeah you fall into it. exactly so we decided to come out in the woods and do a little testing here as well All right, well, the truck drives amazing, so we're going to, uh, you know, fake it till you make it. Nice. 